and we're live. Welcome back to the Leaner Stronger podcast. This is Coach Peter. Coach Teresa. In today's episode, we are going to deliver you a action and jam-packed pint of juicy fruit that is so applicable to you because we're going to cover what are the things that we wish we had known about training sooner. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead first. I'm going to start by saying something that I'm really happy that I learned very, very quickly. And me and my friends, we just stumbled on it completely by accident. And that was working hard, working hard. Back when I started training, when I was 16 years old in Finland, and basically for the first five years, no, let's make it for the first four years of my training career, when I started training, initially I weighed about 60 65 kilograms so i was a very lanky guy That's yeah crazy. and i was only a couple centimeters shorter than what i am t today 100 percent. i was very skinny very lanky oh my god totally yeah so when people say that you have the genes like no man like just look at some of the photos of me like i was a really really skinny kid yeah back then when we were training i had zero idea what i was doing me and my friends we had zero idea like we would like scour this, especially like bodybuilding.com, except in Finnish. And it's like this forum. And then we'd watch these YouTube videos of like professional, especially professional Finnish bodybuilders. And we would just pick something that looks kind of fun. Let's give that a shot. But there was like no real structure to our approach. But the one thing that was really good was that we went balls to walls. And we actually, we took pride on like how much we could destroy ourselves on the leg press, for example. Awesome. Yeah, so we weren't just like fluffing around in the gym. We were actually like really getting after yeah. it. Yeah, like you were going to failure, I guess, multiple yeah. sets. We were training really, really close to failure. And sometimes that's not the best, like you shouldn't do that all the time. But that's a very, very important thing to learn how to do. If you don't know how to push yourself to your limits, it doesn't matter. Nothing else matters. You can have the best program and all that, but if you don't know how to train hard, it's like you're not going to get very good results. So we had that. But then we were missing the other side of the coin. We didn't really have any kind of a program at all. We rarely did the same thing two weeks in a row. Even when it was on the leg day, it was always like, well, what do you feel like starting with today? Oh, that machine is free or that machine looks kind of fun let's go and do that one but now knowing back like obviously from like exercise science perspective that's the completely wrong approach mm. because you need to f do the same thing again and again and again for at least like four to six weeks so that your body actually knows what is it that you're trying to get better if you're always throwing different things at your body you're body is actually never getting good at anything it, you're just exposing yourself to a lot of different things and you're like yeah but i'm really sore every time i train yeah but it doesn't mean that you're making great progress you're getting sore because you're giving your body a novel stimulus you're doing something new and that's because you're getting sore but that doesn't mean that you're actually making the best progress so you need to expose your body to the same stress repeatedly and then do more, apply progressive overload for the best results. Which is funny actually if you think about it because I think you assume that for things to work you need some kind of feedback and you don't always get that physical sense of feedback, in this case pain or discomfort. Do a progressive program that doesn't necessarily pound like crazy amounts of weights each week. Yeah, that's right. Like, you know? Actually, that's how you know that you're doing it kind of right if the the change in the weekly training load is kind of imperceivable but then when you kind of zoom out and you look at okay what was i doing on week one of the training block and you compare that what am i doing in week six of the training block it should be a day and night difference mm -hmm. like the session should be longer it should be harder you should feel more drained after the fact mm -hmm. but the difference between week one and two not really big of difference and then the difference from week three to four like not really that big of a difference really right. i was just going to say so because i've heard you speak like this to your clients so you you would feel that from week to week six that's potentially where you would feel some kind of change in the feeling of your body 
Is that what you're saying? Like, and not necessarily like a pain or like DOMS, but maybe more like a systemic fatigue? Yes, you're, you're absolutely right. So in week one, like you should feel a little bit drained because of the last training program. And then, you know, by week two, you should be feeling pretty good because you've just had that easier training week. And mm -hmm. then as you go through your training block and you're progressively making your training harder, when you get to week six, you should be feeling pretty drained just because of the accumulated overall workload that you've done in this training block. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. That's so great. Yeah, 100%. So not really having a program, that was the, like, by far, like, if I had known that that was an important thing, I would have made so much more progress and achieved a great body so much quicker, 100%. And the second thing that I wish that I had applied sooner in my training is very related to following a program, which is tracking your results. Like if you're not following a program, then by definition, you're not tracking your results. You are literally, I was pissing in the wind. Like I, knowing what I know now and knowing how quickly you can get results if you follow a program and if you track your results, if you don't, you're just pissing in the wind. You don't know what you did last time, so you don't know what you should do this time. And then it's just a complete mess. That's wonderful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people have great intentions. They spend a lot of time at the gym, they show up to their training, or should I say exercise, but there's not really any structure to it. And so they get really beaten up or they beat themselves up they're like oh man I'm putting in all this effort I'm showing up like five days a week but nothing's happening it's because there's no structure there's there's no there's yeah there's no progression really yeah yeah that's right that's what it comes down to yeah and the third thing that I wish that I had known sooner and applied in my training was the knowledge that muscles are important and they're nice they make you look great and they're really important for health but it's not the whole show. Like muscles make you look great, but what makes you feel great is being strong, having a well-developed aerobic system, like being really fit and having, that's the key for having a lot of endurance and having a lot of energy, just not only when you train, but also outside of the gym. Having elasticity in your tendons, like not losing that youthful spring in your step that a lot of us have when you're a kid. You think about, think, think back to when you were younger, like you were probably more athletic, running felt really easy. Any kind of a sport, you could just pick it up. But now if you go and, you know, you go run around, you go play some kind of recreational sport, you feel slow and you feel sluggish and you don't feel very bouncy. Yeah. It's because you've lost some speed, power, and agility and tendon elasticity. And these things are, it's a use it or lose it game. You know, you can always get a lot worse and you, it doesn't like, you don't have to become an athlete. You don't have to completely overhaul your training, but just doing a couple more quick and snappy, powerful athletic drills, like some skipping, jumping, sprinting, throwing things. If you can just sprinkle that on top of your training, you are going to be feeling very, very good. And that's 100% really setting you up for some really healthy aging down the track. Huge, yeah, huge difference. Yeah, what about you? What are the three things that you wish that you had known sooner when it comes to training? Yeah, well, our previous episode, we spoke about all of the things that happened in our early to mid twenties that we didn't really, that didn't really set us up for success. So I'm, I'm going to segue onto some of those things, characteristics that I wish that I had back then that I know would get me results a lot faster, improve my health a lot faster and give me more confidence a lot sooner. Okay. So what would be? So the first thing would be to ditch the goal of being skinny because mm, I don't think women or girls actually wanted this goal initially, but it's kind of been forced and into us through some conditioning, through social media, through magazines and just, I don't know. Some, the society, yeah. Yeah, society. So ditching the goal of feeling you need to be skinny and feeling you need to go down the path of just losing weight or needing to eat as low calories as possible or trying to fit into the smallest dress size possible like it's just it's bs it's you're gonna yo-yo you're gonna feel like shit 
and you're going to leave yourself in a worse off place than you were initially and it's just not sustainable. It's not the key to long, long-term, sustainable, fulfilling goals with your health and fitness. 100%. And from a man's perspective, like, I don't know, it's very individual, but I've never really found, like, never in my life, like, super skinny girls. I've always been like, you know, like, are you sick or something? Like, do you, like, I think you should, you know, be home during dinner time a little bit more often. Honestly, like, it's, it's in, it's... Like I can imagine it would be inbred, like ingrained into the kind of the men's physiological desire. Yeah, of course. It's like <laughs> why do why do why are men you know drawn to glutes. big tits and glutes, right? Yeah. It's because it means that you've had some calories. It means that you're healthy. That's right. It means that you're probably going to be a good mother for my children. You can bring my offspring into the world. Mm -hmm. So it's really like deep kind of in an unconscious level that we find those things really really attractive so i have no freaking idea where this like skinny sexy thing came from like that's <laughs> bullshit yeah it's weird isn't it yeah that's a whole other can of worms but like i don't know if it was it, it almost seems like it's girls dishing it out to other girls i don't know let's not go there it's too complicated yeah. for this episode so ditching the goal of feeling you need to be skinny That's and that it. healthy is skinny because it's really not and that needing to lose the most amount of weight is healthy because yes weight loss is important when it comes to certain demographics who find themselves in that realm of being slightly overweight or obese however if you're already at a healthy BMI, trying to push the skinny is just not going to do great things for you. And actually, let's let's talk about that really quickly. Even if you are in those populations where you are slightly overweight, just trying to be skinny is also not a great goal because it's only going to lead to more yo-yoing and it's not very sustainable. So in short, what I would prefer to do when I was that age is Find a goal that is more in align with increasing muscle mass and then starting to look at decreasing body fat because that's a whole world difference when it comes to long-term results as opposed to just trying to lose weight only and trying to be skinny because muscle mass is so important for so many things. We don't have to go there. Yeah, tell we... us a few. Okay, so blood sugar regulation, it, it assists with healthy bone density for mental health, you know, and then being stronger, you're going to live a better life. You're going to be anti-fragile. That's um, right. You don't so need someone things. to carry your groceries. That's right? it. Like just doing everyday things. Like I don't need you to come and help me when I need to go lift this like massive pot from one side of the house to That's the other. Right. I can freaking do that. I can move furniture by myself. Like it's empowering. I don't have to, I don't need you to open me, open me own bloody jars. The list goes on. Yeah. So it's just, it feels great to be strong. Let's just put it at that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And, but if it's purely for aesthetics, I think when girls first embark on their physique journey, they assume that they want to look skinny, but they don't, they don't actually realize that they want to look toned with muscle tone and leaner. They're completely different things. So I think understanding that from the get go would have saved me years and years and years and probably a lot of health complications yeah. over my life. 100%. Because the negative health outcomes from like really starving yourself for a really long time, like especially for women, like if you get to the point where you start losing your period, mm -hmm. like that is a really, really bad thing for your bone density. And that is a really, really, that, that's a terrible thing. Totally. Like if you can totally mess your bone density up by doing a lot of yo-yoing and doing a lot of crazy dieting in mm. your 20s and 30s just because you want to get skinny. Yeah. And then later in life, when you're in your 60s, when you don't give a shit about being skinny anymore, but now you're paying for the repercussions of having lower bone density. There's some really, really nasty statistics on if you break a hip when you're in your 60s, your life expectancy is a year at that mm, point. Totally. It's terrible because Absolutely. then your cardiovascular health will go down and it's it's a really bad spiral. Yeah. And like not even going as far as a broken hip, like even just your quality of life as somebody in their 60s who's got all these like niggles and like bone issues yeah. and stuff just like 
you I've I've trained women in the past who have said to me in they're in their 60s man I wish that I actually put more effort into building more muscle when I was your age like I look at you and I'm like wow you've really set yourself up for success because they're just dealing with a whole host of issues when it comes to like yeah ligament issues tendons bone yeah, yeah and it's it can be really debilitating because you spent your whole life you know to to get to your retirement where you have freedom but then unfortunately you don't have that the health to go to go along with it yeah. so start young muscle. start young i think that's a that's a key message here and i think that's mm. a really really important conversation yeah. so the second one that's really important would be to learn how to meal prep and a little bit further into that would be to learn how to structure a meal or a meal prep that is balanced, that is going to assist you during the day to prevent anything like snacking or binging for later on at night. So meal prepping, and you know, if the word meal prepping overwhelms you, meal prepping your lunch. I think even just meal prepping, yeah. which can set a lot of people up for success in their graduate years. Yeah. Yeah, not even their graduate year. Well, yeah, technically, like your graduate years. Yeah, and just it doesn't yeah. have like yeah meal meal prepping word. Like if that gives you anxiety, let's call it cook your lunch. Yeah, like, cook, <laughs> like, cook, cook, cook your own cook lunch. Your lunch. And it, yeah. it this is not just for people in the early twenties. This is for anyone. Like for the, anyone. Absolutely. If you want to reduce stress and save time and save money, mm. wait a minute. Like shut up and take my money. Absolutely. I can save you money i can save you time and i can save you stress all you have to do is to eat this red pill Tell would you, you take it shut up and take my money shut well up and take my money you got it right there stop meal prepping yes like yeah it's and, powerful and you know meal prepping is really important bringing your lunch to work is important but i'm not just talking two pieces of toast with avocado like there needs to be some balance here we yeah, need to look like at a proper some, meal that's it we need some protein in there there needs to be some healthy fiber some some vegetables or yeah whole foods yeah so that would be my my next big thing what's the and last the third one thing would be learn how to structure your week and be organized it's huge because that's where I feel people lack as they as life gets busier and busier. And it's not even necessarily a thing of people don't have time. Like 99% of the time when people say they don't have time to me, it's not that they don't have time. It's that they haven't learned how to structure their working week and then their healthy parts of living into that week. So I think learning how to structure your week and then follow it and follow your calendar and if you put something in there you need to follow through yeah okay so often you hear that like if you're not prioritizing it then it's obviously not going to happen someone might actually like i oh, know i seriously prioritize my health mm -hmm. like i'm you know i'm going to the gym yes. like i'm I'm like paying hundreds of dollars a month on new Lululemon gear and I'm like I'm, it's 100% it's a priority I'm doing my best but then it's actually what might be lacking is the skill mm. of structuring your days and your weeks mm. in a way that makes it all work totally. and it's not really like you're, you're not like overwhelming yourself For sure. but then at the same time it needs to be kind of strict enough to, to actually give you that structure absolutely and not just be like willy-nilly bullshit yeah no willy-nillys and and i guess as well being realistic about like the gym that you choose to go to and the locations and the logistics of things because you know i think especially if you live in a big city or if your gym is far away from home you don't want to have to drive like 20 minutes in after a 30 minute commute back home mm. you've got to be a little bit more realistic about okay like gym might mean quite early in the morning, but then being okay with getting ready at the gym to get to work. Like yeah. I find that people, some, some people are resistant to getting ready at the gym to go to work because they don't have all the comforts of the home. But like sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. That's right. And just hurry the hell up already in there. It's really not that difficult to bloody just Get, your, get yourself in the gear and go. But sometimes right. watching this thing is like just getting... Anyways, let's not go there. What? So. Anyway. All right, that, let's wrap it up. That is, is that cool? That is today's episode. Because we have a special guest. Aww. Someone has woken up from her little nap. And that means that we're going to be wrapping up very, very shortly. Where did you go? Hey, yes. 
Hope that this was useful. If there's any questions, don't hesitate to send us a message. I can be found on Instagram at Coach Puru. And I'm at Coach Teresa West. That is the best way to find us. If you have any comments, if you have any questions for f- or suggestions for future episodes, we would love to hear those. Other than that, I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic rest of the day. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.